first question. So, in your opinion, what are the main struggles of an independent artist these days? So, I would say the main struggle of an independent artist would be promoting yourself. Right now, it's easier than ever to sort of get yourself out there. You know, get your create a song, get yourself on Spotify. But moving past that noise is very difficult. There's 60,000 songs released on Spotify every day, and 1.2 million a year come from major label artists. And they have, you know, marketing departments, you know, promotion arms, interns that are spamming those songs all across the internet and in, you know, other media. And so, as an independent artist trying to put a spotlight on yourself and, and saying hey out of those 60,000 songs uploaded in one day you know listen to mine right so that's probably the biggest struggle for an independent artist is sort of cutting through that noise and getting heard and getting yourself promoted getting yourself inside earbuds yeah so sort of to follow up from this if you had a one wish what would you wish for that could help you in your artistic life at the moment So if I had one wish, and, and it being within reason, you know, I'm not going to ask for, you know, a big stack of $100 bills or something like that. I would say having a dedicated person, it, or it could even be, yeah, it should probably be a person and not a robot, but having some sort of dedicated means to promote, because there are so, so many different ways you can promote yourself with the internet, which is great. I think 25 years ago, you know, there were limited, limited ways to get yourself into ears. You know, you, you had the radio, You might have a couple magazines reviewing music, and then you had local shows you could play, but now there is just so many ways to promote. You can get on YouTube playlists, you can get on Spotify playlists, you can work with streamers, you can have your music on TikTok, you can post yourself on Reddit, you can post yourself on, you know, five, ten different social media platforms, and you know, you might get a little bit of promotion out of each of those, you know, not you're, you might not go viral, but you might get a little bit of following out of each of those, but it's time consuming to, you know, find YouTube playlists that, that work with your music, contact the owner of the playlist, submit your music to the curator, you know, they might like it, they might not like it, they'll put you on the playlist, you know, post to different Reddit subreddits that might create a following for you. Um, so if there was a dedicated means or a dedicated person who just took your music, you had a good song and they said, okay, I'm going to spend my my week during the promotion just submitting this out, coming up with ideas, submitting it to YouTube streamers, you know, video game streamers who might want background music or something like that. I think that would be a big help because it takes a lot of time. Yeah, so sort of since you touched the, on the subject of uh, your needs, you know, how do you see the future of independent artists? And so the future of independent artists is something that, um, you know, they've got to find a way to differentiate themselves, create value create um, a reason for people to want to listen to it over over major label artists. And of course, the music's got to be awesome. The music's got to be good. But once you have a good song, how do you get yourself heard? And I think one of the ways to do that, and Jamendo does this very well, is, okay, you know, uh, you have different retail outlets that are streaming music or, or playing music. And Jamendo will put you on a playlist or that radio playlist and you'll be played in these stores and the reason they want the independent artists is because they don't have to deal with all the administrative overhead and paying extra royalties to BMI and other streaming outlets um, and so it makes the independent artists attractive because they look at it and they go yeah this music's great I want to listen to it and I don't have to deal with paying this absorbent fee to a music streaming service or a, um, a public rights society um, so that's one way to do it a another way for i think independent artists to differentiate themselves is just to work with small content creators there's you know just like music is a content creation if you can work with youtube artists or streamers or things of that nature and they don't have to worry about oh am i going to get you know copyright flagged or a cease and desist letter you know i'm all set you know all, all i have to do is pay a very small amount to use your song or you know if they're very small maybe you just let them use the song because they're you know using it for non-commercial purposes um and i think if independent artists do that they can create a space for themselves that major label artists aren't going to you know the, you know they're, they're about the money so it's not worth their time to sort of find those sort of avenues that the the, the independent artists can sort of make their living in and, and get heard Yeah, yeah, true. So, sort of to continue from that then, what advice would you give to an independent artist who's starting now, in 2021? Okay, so, my, my advice would, first of all, um, you, you have to focus on your craft, you have to focus on creating great music and creating an image for yourself and, and being a good artist. But after you do that, as we talked about, there's 60,000 Spotify songs uploaded a day, so there's a lot of, and there's a lot of good music in there. 
And I think don't be afraid to just give your music away to everyone. You know, if somebody, a streamer wants to use it, let them use it. If so, you know, it, it, don't worry, especially for the first s songs you're releasing, the album, don't be worried about, oh, geez, you know, I, you know, I got to make sure that I get paid for this or that. Like, just get the music out there and make sure people like it. Even if somebody with 10 followers on YouTube wants to use it while playing video games, you know, let, let them use it. And you know, you'll build that person themselves who's creating the video. They'll become a fan of yours because they liked your music enough to use it. And then, you know what? Maybe their followers might like it, too. And so, and once you build that following and you build yourself as, as sort of a, an artist, then you can be a little bit more about, okay, I want to make sure my music is used this way or that way. But when you're first starting out, just get it out there. Cool, yeah, that's a good advice. So let's talk about the spin wires a little bit. Could you tell us a bit more about your latest project and what inspired us? So the spin wires is uh, a four piece uh, rock band and we're a performing rock band. We play shows. And our latest project, our latest single that we released is called Time Bomb. And the latest project we're working on is, is an association with that. If you saw the artwork for Time Bomb, it's on, on Gemendo. There's a secret agent, he's got his gun pulled and there's an explosion in the background. And that is sort of the theme of these songs that we've been writing. The first song is called Time Bomb. And we've got another song that we're working on and, and it's just finishing up getting mastered called Secret Agent 89, which believe it or not is about a secret agent. So this is the first time we've worked on sort of a theme album or a theme EP, I should say, uh, where we've got multiple songs that are sort of following an, a general theme of sort of a secret agent or secret agent sort of themes. And like many songs we write, it's, it was written in, in a band setting. So sort of like a concept album, so to, to, to an extent, right? With yeah, okay, yes, it's yes, it is a uh, the, the songs we're writing now are a bit of a concept album, concept EP, all centered around sort of secret agent sort of concept. Yes, cool. Could you describe your creative process overall? Like how how do you go about this? Yeah, absolutely. The creative process for the Spin Wires is something where, as I mentioned, we're a, a band, a rock band. So when we write songs, you know, it's as a group. Somebody will come with a riff, somebody will come with an idea, somebody will come with, it could be even just a beat or something like that, and we play with it, and they might have a, a concept for lyrics, and we all just sort of play through it, we play live at, together. And the great thing about this band that I, that I really love is, you know, we're not afraid to step on each other's toes to give criticism, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful process to have the input of others because you can say, oh, I really liked what you played there, but could you do it this way? Or let's cut the drums here. I, I don't think I've ever had somebody say, yeah, I want to try this. And everybody says, no, we, we say, yeah, let's try it. Let's hear it and see what it sounds like. And then after we do that and we play through it, we go, ah, it might not work or maybe not. You know, what if we do it this way? So that, that's generally the creative process, sort of a, a group collaborative. Somebody comes up with an idea, a riff, lyrics, you know, a melody, and then we play with it. So like a full democracy, almost. Yeah, I yeah, I would like to say it's uh, more of a republic, but yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you were to pick one song of your catalog, of your previous songs, not necessarily in Time Bomb, but um, one that everybody after this interview should actually go and listen to, what would it be? I would say um, we have a song called Reckless. And this was a song that a video game company in the Ukraine contacted us and they said we are uh, coming out with a game called kill all zombies and um, we like your music will you write a custom theme song to it and um, this was a couple of years ago and i thought oh my god this is a great opportunity it's a song uh, it's a video game about you know shooting zombies and i would love to do this and, and they basically said well we need it within like a week and so i thought wow that's that's a that's a huge headline so we I, I'm so proud of it because over the course of a week, we put it together and it sort of embodies a lot of what we like to do. The song is, is, is obviously about fighting zombies, but it's got sort of this high action feeling to it, but then it's got a dance beat during the chorus. So it's something that you can sort of bob your head along to. And it's, and it's gotten pretty good traction from being in that video game and uh, the fans seem to like it. So I would highly recommend taking a listen to Reckless. And um, if you've played the video game, Kill All Zombies, you've probably heard it during the menu. Cool, okay. And going back to Time Bomb, I, I listened to it a few times uh, before we started talking and, and I kind of feel like, based on the lyrics, there's a bit of a story there and I wanted to ask if you could tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, so Time Bomb, as I mentioned, it fits into a, a greater concept of what we're working on about Secret Agents. So one of the themes there was we originally had written the song uh, or we're working on the song and the song was 
a little bit focused on a relationship or a woman and a man that, um, you know, she always was going off on him or he had to be really careful around her because she could go off at the wrong times. And as we were writing the song, we thought, okay, well, let's play with our secret agent theme or our concept. And we'll try to make it more about, is, is he talking about a relationship or is he talking about an actual bomb that's going to go off? And so we wanted to fuse those sort of concepts. And that's what we ended up with, Time Bomb. That's cool. It's like a duality there in the lyrics. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, I, I love when um, when you can pull it off right and someone's listening to a song and they're not quite sure, you know, is he talking about this or is he talking about this other thing? And, and, and the great thing about being a listener is you can make the decision, right? Yeah. When you're listening to it, what the song's about. Actually, it's a good, good question to kind of close it off uh, since we're talking about your concept album being sort of movie-like. So the question is, if, if, your, if your music was a movie, what features would you, would you have in it uh, in terms of the visual identity? So it would definitely be an action movie. Uh, and I think it could be an action superhero movie. It could be an action secret agent movie. It could be an action racing movie, as long as there's action. And that's something that we've, what I've always loved is album art. And I think that plays into it, is creating album art that sort of represents or catches your eye. It's one way of promoting yourself. Because a lot of times there's there's a lot of music on a page, whether it be a YouTube page, whether it be Jamendo, whether it be anywhere. And you don't hear that music until you click it. And so, uh, the art is one way that you can stand up, the art and the album title. And so I love having album art that I think looks cool. And so the most recent one was a secret agent with his gun out with an explosion in the background. And then the album art for our Nights Out EP is um, a group of superheroes, you know, just about to jo jump into a fight. And so it would certainly be something within that framework, you know, superhero action, secret agent action, something like that. Absolutely. Cool. Like the zombies game, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you very much for finding time to talk to me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me here, Bartek. And I, you know, I didn't hear any of that construction in the background, so hopefully it doesn't come through <laughs> the recording. And I appreciate your time. <laughs>